Hello folks. So tonight I am going after a wide field view of the wizard. Um, I'm hoping to finish it tonight, but as usual, the skies have turned cloudy. I don't know when I'm ever going to finish this. It's, it's driving me up a wall. I was hoping for at least two and a half hours of clear weather, but I, I don't think that's going to happen. And uh, right now, the wizard is going away, so I'm, I'm starting to get nervous that I might not finish it. If I'm lucky, maybe I'll have seven hours of data on it in total. Uh, it's just really bad these days. And um, uh, it, it's with the Rasa, of course. I'm trying to finish my first project with the Rasa. It's incredible. I, I can't get any time to image. But um, what I did is uh, I imaged with one minute exposures the whole way through uh, for HA and Sulfur for now. I used gain 139. I'm going to use um, gain 75 tonight on oxygen. And uh, they're all one minute exposures, like I said. And what I notice is about, uh, for about a one minute exposure, the mean readout is coming out to be about the same as a four minute exposure on my wide field refractor, the one I replaced. So that seems to be my sweet spot, maybe in the 12 or 1300 range on a good night. Although not lately because the moon has been 100% and it's been hazy. Seems like it's always over 2000 right now. But the problem though with doing one minute exposures is um, I'm losing too much time per hour between all the all the settling between frames, dithering every third frame. I'm only able to capture 45 minutes per hour of data with such short exposures as one minute. So on the next project that I've already started, I cut the gain in half for for um, oxygen or for, for sulfur so far. And I took the, the exposure up to two minutes. So with gain 75 and the exposure of two minutes, I'm getting 52 minutes of data per hour instead of 45. And so I, I think that's a better way to go. And I'm trying to weigh the pros and cons of both ways. And so I'm thinking gain 75, 52 minutes versus gain 139, 45 minutes per hour. And I, I've come up with uh, the pros would be, you know, they say lower the lower gain you have, the better your dynamic range. I don't know if I'd really see the difference between 139 and 75, but I'll give that, that'll be a pro on the gain 75 side. Uh, another pro would be, of course, there's a plane, by the way. Go away. Another pro would be um, seven extra minutes of data. Now that's the big one. I'm going to count that twice. So I've got three pros so far for gain 75. And of course, two minutes versus one minute, I'll have fewer files. Um, but I have a lot of hard drive space. I'll just give that a half of a pro. So I've got three and a half pros for the Game 75 side. And I'm trying to think of cons, and I can't think of any. I mean, can you guys, um, will the Nebula be less bright for Game 75? 45 minutes of Game 139 versus 52 minutes of Game 75? Is, is it going to be less bright? I'm not sure, so I'm not sure if I should categorize that as a pro or a con. But anyway, that's what's going through my head for now. I'm going to go with, uh, in the future, gain 75 in two minutes. Uh, and I'm cold. And I'm going to I'm gonna take you back now to my imaging session that was recorded a few days ago when I had both scopes out. I don't have both scopes out tonight, because I'm not even sure if I'm going to be able to image tonight. Uh, the planes are going nuts today. I gotta remember that on a Tuesday night, I get non-stop planes. That's interesting. Okay, I'll see you later. Okay, finally, I have two rigs running at once. It seems like it's been a long time. Man, the weather has been terrible. You know, I... Um, I've always avoided that jinx whenever I get new equipment. The weather was never that bad, but this time it, it, it was payback time, I'm telling you. But I'm, I'm glad to see I can finally image on a clear night, except the moon is out and it's 100% illuminated. So that figures. 
But uh, there's my Explore Scientific going that way. And there's my Rasa going that way. And let's take a look at my Rasa data. Because that's what I am going to be making the video for this time. And it's, uh, I didn't record my intro yet. So um, I'm not sure what I might have said in the intro. So I'm going to tag that on later. So I hope I'm not repeating myself. But it's a wide field image of the Wizard Nebula. And um, I'm doing one minute exposures. Um, HA, it's going to be in the Hubble palette, especially with the moon out. I'm not ready to start galaxy season yet. I'm going to stretch nebula season as long as I can because that's my favorite thing to do. And, uh, yeah, I'm doing uh, HA, one minute exposures. Um, let's see. Uh, oh. And, and I'm doing unity gain, of course. 13921. And right now, um, I've seen this, the mean readout as low as 1,400 or 1,500, so I think the moon is definitely having an impact on that. And I saw it was a lot, it was about 50% higher on my refractor, so both rigs right now are paying the price of imaging with a full moon, even with HA. I wouldn't dare do oxygen right now, no way. But there's a... Uh, There's the wizard. And one thing about the Rasa is um, I notice you have to do a mirror flip. The, the picture's inverted. So um, when processing, I, I've got to remember to do that because sometimes I do see people, they capture the horse head, and the horse head is facing the wrong way. And now I know why, because they didn't do a, a mirror flip um, in their processing. So, And let's take a look at the, uh, the focus. Um, I'm, I still didn't put the, the focus motor on there, and the focus is consistent. Um, so I'm at, the HFR is 153. I'm going to be watching that. I'm, I'm just really curious uh, uh, how long I can go um, until I finally lose focus on this thing. And uh, what else did I want to say? Oh, you know, I'm getting too old for this. It was really cold setting up two rigs out there. I, I don't know how... I've got to set some kind of limit, but right now it might be, um, Alexa, what's the temperature? Right now, it's 22 degrees Fahrenheit. 22 Fahrenheit. Tonight, expect a low of 14 degrees. Oh, it's getting down to 14 Fahrenheit. That, that's just too cold for me. I don't even want to roll this stuff back in in the morning. But, um, and right now, I'm still not sure how much data I'm supposed to collect with this scope. Um. I, I want to make sure I don't overdo it and I don't go past that point of diminishing returns. So um, we'll have to see. Oh, let's take a look at my guiding. I want to show you something first in Pixel Site 2, though. Um, there's my dither guiding. Ooh, uh, maybe that's because my dither. 1.15. I noticed I made a mistake, though, with my balance out there. I didn't. I, I did my balance before I even put the, the dew shield on, and I know that that might be uh, impacting some stuff out there. So. I got to remember to do that. 0 0.8, 0 0.79, yeah, that's fine. But I know I can I can balance it better. So anyway, but let me show you Pixinsight. sight. Okay, since the Rasa is new, um, I wanted to give you an idea of what the data looks like. This is just 45 minutes of data that I'm playing around with. Of what does it look like? without flats and with flats. So I'm curious about this myself. And uh, so with my two inch Bader filters, this is without flats. And you can see I barely, barely a touch of vignetting going around the, 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 the edges here. And um, when I applied the flats, so I will always do flats no matter what, that's just the way I do it. And some people told me, well, you can skip flats, but nah, I like to do flats. <laughs> And that is with the flats applied, and you can see uh, it fixed the corners. Um, and I'm a little bit darker in this corner, uh, but a, a, DB, a DBA can fix that. But uh, I definitely like the way it looks when I apply the flats. And what I noticed, even with my refractors, is that it, it doesn't, flats don't just fix the corners. It seems like it adds contrast to the whole um, picture. 
Um, this seems like really there's a lot of brightness going on in, in the middle here where I, I, I see more contrast. I see more dark areas here. Uh, I don't know. That's just, that's just what I noticed. I, so that's why I, no matter what, I'll always do flats. I don't know if other people see that flats add contrast across the whole image. That's what I noticed. And let me show you. Um, this is what my flat master looks like. Um, this is uh, 50 flats stacked together, and it's the master flat. And what I notice is how clean everything is. Because um, really, my ASI 1600 Pro, that's a new camera. I just got it a few months ago. The beta filters are brand new. The ROS is new. Everything is new. There's no dust. It's just a pleasure to see clean data. And... Um, and this is a little processing I did on that 45 minutes of data. So, and I did the mirror flip. So, um, that was the original here on the left. And uh, let's just close that one. So, what do you think? I think it looks pretty good for 45 minutes of data. So, anyway, that's all I got. And um, I'll see you later.